Do you know what causes earwax? I mean, what is the purpose of earwax? These are actually two of the most common questions that I get in my clinic almost every day. Earwax is there to protect the ear and your ceruminous and sebaceous glands are the two glands that actually produce the wax. It's an oily substance from the body that helps to protect the ear from foreign bodies such as dirt, debris, bugs, and anything else that might work its way down the ear canal. It also helps to moisten the skin in the ear canal as well. Now, your ear is self-cleaning, so due to a process called epithelial migration, that earwax should be coming out on its own. Sometimes, by using Q-tips or other self-cleaning devices, we push this wax down further, and that self-cleaning mechanism doesn't really work. Let's take this first patient here, for example. They tried every at-home remedy you could think of. They started by using Q-tips. When that didn't work, they switched to the corkscrew looking tool that says that you can safely remove earwax at home. Now, it didn't do any real damage to the ear canal. We do see a little bit of redness down there, but no major damage. And yet the wax is still in place. Finally, they switched to eardrops and then they went to an irrigation after that. So they used the eardrops and then they rinsed them out. Finally, they went back to Q-tips because you know, if it didn't work the first time, it should work the fourth time. Finally, they came in to see us. We're having to do this removal now and there's severe impaction. They're suffering from oral fullness, fullness of the ears, pain, pressure, and reduced hearing. We're using the curette to pull this wax away from the ear canal wall and free up a path all the way back down to the eardrum. We're gonna use a combination of curette and irrigation with this patient in order to help to provide them the relief that they need. This wax removal video is gonna take a little bit longer than normal. Like I said, I'm gonna put this together as a compilation video. This is earwax removal vlog number 77. If you like these earwax removals, take a moment to like and subscribe. It really does help with the YouTube algorithm and helps out our channel a lot. And look at that there. You're seeing a big chunk come out with this curette and you're also getting a whole lot of water. You can actually see the moisture in the earwax following the irrigation. We're gonna get this out. We're gonna see how red that ear canal is and if anything needs to be done, if they need to be referred to an ENT or back to their primary care doctor possibly. Now we can see all the way down to the eardrum. It is a little bit discolored. There's a little bit more um, stuff down there kind of on the sides. There's nothing major going on here. We don't really need to send this patient off to their primary care doctor. We did inform them that because they were having pain before the uh, wax removal, if the, if the pain persists, we definitely want them to get seen by their primary care doctor, but no major issue there. Moving on to our second patient, you can see just a very different consistency of this earwax. The curette's not going through it as quickly and it came out in almost like a ball. That nice yellowish color there is a great healthy color for earwax and it really stuck together well. So it looks like this patient, even though they probably used a Q-tip or something else and kind of crammed this down there, this buildup was not long going. It kind of, it must have been recent. Let's take a look in and there's another good view there of the eardrum. We're gonna move on to yet another patient and you can see again, a very similar texture. This one was actually done by my student. So you may notice that the camera angle is a little bit different, but when they went in to do the wax removal, everybody has a preference as to how they hold the equipment and we're training her on how to do the wax removal. She's doing great with this one taking a little bit longer because she's moving a little slower, being very gentle for the patient, and again, not causing any pain or discomfort. Um, this patient here was suffering from not so much the pain, but definitely fullness and a little bit of ringing in the ears. Uh, likely that ringing is due to hearing loss being caused by this big plug of earwax. So we're gonna get this out here nice and slow and then we'll have a good view of the eardrum and we'll see what it looks like. Okay, now if you guys like this format of video where it's a little bit longer, please let me know in the comments. Um, I do try to respond to all of my comments. And then if you do like the videos where we put together and 
uh, have Mauricio, my office manager, read me some of those comments so you can get a kind of unfiltered and live well, pseudo live uh, response to those comments, let me know because I enjoyed doing that, but we didn't get many people who watched or enjoyed that video. All right, so let's go on here to yet another wax removal. This time, the coloration of the earwax is completely different. We're gonna use this curette here to remove this. We're back to myself doing this removal. Um, I tend to be a little bit more aggressive than my student as she hasn't been doing this quite as long. Um, always keeping in mind the patient's comfort level, making sure that there's no discomfort or pain with the patient. A huge chunk came out there, you could see it on the towel, and we already at least have a partial view of the eardrum behind. Let's see what happens as we keep digging this out. There we go. Yes, this much earwax can absolutely affect your hearing. That's one of the questions that we get a lot in the office. People want to know what are some of the other symptoms that come up with earwax besides my ears feeling full? Well, your ears feeling full is definitely one. And then after that, it would be reduced hearing. Um, tinnitus and possibly pain in the ears. If you do feel like your ears are really full, the worst thing you can do is stick something down there trying to clean it out yourself because you tend to push it down deeper. Anytime we see wax past that second bender, as we're going into the ear canal here, you actually see hair cells on the sides of the ear canal. When we see wax pushed way beyond where the hair cells are, that's when we know, oh, somebody's been pushing it down there, either using a cure or either using a Q-tip or something else to get that wax down there. You can see that eardrum there, it's looking pretty good. A little bit of redness and irritation. Part of that is definitely the coloration of the earwax rather than an actual bleeding in the ear canal. Um, but that can cause some bleeding down there if that wax gets stuck to the side of the ear canal wall. We just wanna get what's at the top here. And gently use the curette to kind of spin it around and just pull it down off the ceiling of the ear canal wall. And then there's a great view of the eardrum there. All right, and yet again, now we're going back in. You can see that this other side, this is the patient's other ear, not nearly as packed up. All we're gonna do here, just a little cleanup. Since we did one side, we might as well do them both, get it nice and clean and ready to go for the patient. It's really important that when you're having your hearing tested that they make sure that they get all of the earwax out, especially if they're gonna be doing tests like a tympanogram and making sure the eardrum is moving properly. We need to get an accurate uh, ear canal volume. So that does help when you remove big globs of wax. Plus, if you're using insert headphones and you have any earwax in there, there is the possibility of caking up that, uh, the opening in the insert headphone. All right, again, thank you for watching. This has been You Heard It Here with Dr. Gary. This is an attempt at a compilation video. If you like this format, let me know and we'll give it a try again. See you in the next video.